Hello everyone and welcome once again to another Kerbal Space Program adventure in which we'll be completing the next phase of the grand plan of establishing a hotel and casino on the surface of Minmus in order to ensure that my space program continues to receive a steady influx of money. We've built the airliner that will fly guests to the spaceport, we've built the SS2 that can send a high number of Kerbals and 38 tons of cargo to Minmus and back again, and now we need a means of transporting said Kerbals from the SS2 to the hotel hotel and casino itself. Now some of you may be wondering, Matt you over planning overlord, why not just get those lazy tourists to EVA themselves and get them to the hotel rather than setting up this elaborate rover to transport them? Well, I'm glad you asked. The rover is designed to fulfill a few objectives. First of all, in case the SSTO touches down a little too far from the base, this bus will ensure the Kerbals will still be able to reach it without having to worry about a potential multi-hour long hike in the vacuum of space. Secondly, this bus is packing, hypothetically at least, lots of life support systems, so should anything go awry, it has large deployable solar panels to supply energy to power its small but functional habitat features for days on end in order to allow the blunderbirds to come and save the crew, and tourists I guess as well. <laughs> uh, thirdly, we can use this as a means to transport Kerbals to the sites and interests around Minmus, and uh, fourthly, <coughs> and perhaps most importantly, tourist type Kerbals literally cannot EVA in this game, so the only way I'm going to be able to move them into the base is to have them transfer between crew modules via docking ports and stuff, which is why I'm designing this bus to directly dock with the SSTO via the aircraft's anterior docking port. This did require some uh, finesse tuning on the runway, which I did. Uh, what I did was I used the gravity hack cheat and set it to the same surface as Mimus's gravity, uh, to the same surface gravity of Mimus, uh, and then I tried to see how well the crafts would kind of be aligned. I also changed the landing gear of the SSTO after the issues I found uh, when I tested it last week, wherein it would constantly wobble around on its landing legs when touched down on Minmus, so I got rid of those and just fitted some skis for it to sit on when landed on Minmus, or I guess Kerbin as well. And you can see that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing here. <laughs> I haven't tested it with these new skis, to be fair, so it might not be able to get to Minmus anymore, but I, I, I do... It shouldn't make any difference whatsoever, so I, I, do, I don't see a reason why it wouldn't work with it. And here you can see me just testing out the alignment. So first of all, I dropped them both to the floor of the space plane hangar to make sure they were kind of roughly at the same level, and then we can just see if they join together. And I got a bit of zealous there, and they, there was a bit of an explosion there, but they pretty much aligned. So what I did now, because that docking port is hanging a little bit low off the front of the bus, so from a side view it looks like the docking port kind of continues on to a boarding tube of only half the diameter of the docking port itself, if that makes sense and you could see. Uh, so what I did was I added this little command pod and crew module to give the appearance of a boarding tube that passes through to ascend to the actual seating area of the transport above. You may have also seen me place those uh, landing cans at various points on the uh, the bus. That's just so we can have the little Mimus, uh, Mimus Base Hotel and Casino logo uh, on the sides of the craft itself because none of the actual parts I used have flag parts and I kind of wanted to have the logo somewhere on the bus. So that's why I did those little grey command pods at various places but had them rotated so that there's an example there you could just see and on the side there as well. Just we've got the logo on the side of the bus. They don't actually serve a function but here we are doing a nice cinematic zoom down towards the launch pad so you can see the rocket finished. I didn't think you'd need to see the actual construction of the rocket itself because as you can see it, it's fairly minimalist so we're going to spool up the engines, throttle them up, press T to turn SES and then once we're at max thrust we can hit space again to release the launch clubs and watch this soar into the sky. We've got a nice... Uh, I love that. I still, I still love the smoke effects they added. I guess it was a while ago now when they added the smoke effects so you can see them sort of shooting out of those diversion tubes. I don't know what their actual name is but whatever. Uh, nothing special about the ascent really, just gradually tipping over until, you know, until we're in orbit I guess. <laughs> uh, so the actual uh, parts used in this thing are the DLC parts, we have the very wide fairing to, you know, help encase the, the actual wide diameter of the transport nicely, and then of course we have the really large Saturn V parts, but we're using the vector engines. Because the Vector engine is still the best engine in the game. I don't care what you say, it's the best engine. <laughs> well, I mean, at least at least for a sense. I mean, you got the Mammoth, the Mastodon now, and the Vector. I mean, the Mastodon, I don't... It's a funny one, because it's the most... Pa it's, it's more powerful than the Vector, and it packs a similar sort of form factor if you use the bare version of the engine. But it just doesn't feel as good. I mean, it's heavier, which kind of offsets its extra power, and it doesn't have the insane gimbal range of the Vector, so it doesn't even have that utility 
to its advantage. I mean, I guess I get that it was not really designed to be a functional engine as such. It's more just meant to be a, an F1. I was about to say J2, but it's an F1. F1 recreation, so you can do more accurate replicas of the Saturn V. But, you know, in, in terms of actual usefulness uh, in Kerbal rocketry, it's not really... I still find the vector is the one I'm always reaching for, although I only play sandbox and science mode and, you know, if you're playing career there is the added cost of the vector to consider, but I think most people play um, science mode or sandbox mode, I mean once you get to that stage in career mode where you're just building stuff like this, <laughs> uh, costs probably aren't really an issue anyway. Speaking of career mode actually, would anyone like me to do a career mode series in a similar way I did the Laon Aeros by Science Mode series? Because a lot of people have asked me asked me to do one, and I feel like I don't want to be treading the same beats because the series would pretty much follow the exact same progression route as the Science Mode playthrough, as in we do a Minmus mission, then we do a Mun mission, then we do a Juna mission, then we do an Eve mission, and that would that would be it. <laughs> is that something you want to see? I mean, I'm more than happy to do it. I mean, that's, that's I I haven't played career mode actually ever in my life, believe it or not, because when I first got this game, career mode didn't exist. And then by the time I started making YouTube videos, that's when career mode was, I think it was about that time career mode was added. And by that point, I was I was kind of done with making sort of with grinding out the science tree, so um, I just I just liked sandbox mode from that point on. So maybe I should give it a go. I feel like I ought to at least be familiar with career mode. I know that it involves contracts and completing the contracts and stuff. Um, I played bits of it, but not really properly. So maybe it'll be a, it'll be a learning experience and a journey for both of us. But uh, here we are just deorbiting the booster, by the way, because this is my Laon Aerospace save, and I did make a pledge to never leave debris in orbit. So if I wanted to, I could have landed that thing like a Falcon 9. Um, probably didn't have quite enough fuel in it, but I didn't do a very efficient ascent. So we could have easily got a little bit more Delta V if I had planned it a bit more, but I never intended to recover that booster because funding is not an issue. Despite the fact that we're now having to establish a... Uh, extraplanetary hotel in order to help with funds. I mean, this is all, you know, this is all just hypothetical story, right? Just to justify, just to justify this mission. But here we are, having a nice view of the craft itself. And you may be uh, wondering why I've got vectors again, because vectors are really designed for atmospheric flight. They're not as efficient in a vacuum. I mean, there are more inefficient engines out there, but there are certainly much, much more efficient engines we could be using. I'm using them mainly because A, it cuts down on the mission duration because they're very powerful, and B, because of the fact they have that enormous gimbal range, because as you, as you can see, it's not the most balanced craft, is it? So the massive gimbal of the vectors will just help keep this thing uh, straight and true, as they would say, uh, when we're doing our manoeuvres. You can see it wobbling a little bit there. Well, that is probably the uh, the gimbal of the vectors trying a little bit too hard. We should probably have we should probably have toned that down a little bit. But you know, as you can see, we've, we're we're fine. <laughs> Actually, while we've got a good shot of the craft on screen, okay, never mind, uh, it's gone. <laughs> well, we've got the map view now, so we're just going to watch our apoapsis rise to the point where we get a Mimus encounter. Not the best encounter because of the fact that uh, Mimus is on that tilted inclination relative to our equatorial curb in orbit. So we're going to need to do a adjustment there. We do. It's usually good to do the adjustment sort of in deeper space in order to cut down the cost. When you do inclination changes, it's more expensive the closer you are to periapsis. So we'll just kind of do it halfway. And as you can see, it's a very minimal burn. And we can get ourselves nice and, nice and along Kerbin's, um, not Kerbin's, Minmus's equator. Now we're going to be aiming for our flag plant site that we did last last week in the SSTO mission because that was the, uh, the whole point of that mission was not only to test the SSTO but also to establish a good location for the hotel. So that's the site we're going to be aiming for because that's the site we decided on and here we are approaching Minmus Periapsis now to commence our burn and now we've got the craft on screen again. One thing I'd like to mention about its design, you can see those silver tanks at the front with a docking port at the very, very front. The reason for this docking port here is so we have a control point on the craft that is in line with its centre of thrust. As you can see, there are no forward facing command pods that lie exactly along the thrust vector. We only have uh, the docking port and probe core just below those two windows at the front. You're the ones we were going to dock the SSTO to, uh, but as I mentioned, those are very low down. So they're fine when we're driving this thing around because we're not using engines for that, but they are less than ideal for flying it because, as I said, they're below the thrust vector. If you don't control from a point that falls along the center of thrust, the uh, the reaction control systems in SAS uh, they'll end up fighting the th uh, they'll end up fighting with the thrust of the engines and pointing prograde or retrograde on the nav ball or, or anywhere really, it won't actually be within the alignment of the engines, and this will result in the craft kind of spinning out of control when you attempt to do a burn uh, you know you can overcome this by manually adjusting it yourself by kind of aiming above or below the prograde marker or any marker again 
Uh, but that's difficult, and it's a lot of effort. And by adding that little docking port at the front, we can set up a new control point that falls along the thrust vector, so we don't have to worry about anything like that. And, you know, that being said, this craft might have been fine with the slightly off-centre probe core, given the fact that we're using vectors where their enormous gimbal uh, could well have been able to overcome the slight discrepancy, but, you know, I'd rather not find out the hard way if they can't. <laughs> And for the touchdown itself, we'll do the last quick thrust of the vectors and then detach them. And there was a bit of an explosion, but luckily nothing on the on the on the rover was destroyed, so we're fine. And that just makes sure that the vectors are nice and clear. The plan was for them to fly up, but then they wouldn't actually reach orbit. They would end up on a ballistic trajectory, so they would crash down onto the Minmus again at high speed and destroy themselves. But I think that didn't quite work out and some of the parts did survive. But I guess they are out of the physics range for the base, so it shouldn't affect frame rate or anything because, you know, high part counts do cripple performance in this game, sadly. But there's a nice little shot of the bus. So as you can see, we parked a little bit far away from where we want to end up, which is by the flag. And this is for a couple of reasons. So we can, well, the main reason is because I was lazy, but the other reason is now we can test out its ability to drive along the surface of Minmus. But before we get to that, we can do a nice little pan around and I can show off some of the features. So we have the fuel cells there. Again, they just sort of serve as a makeshift uh, representation of its uh, habitation features in case of an emergency and there's the deployable solar panels that will never be used again unless it needs to be used as an emergency habitat. We have the long-range communication satellite aerial there, <laughs> satellite dish there as well as the smaller aerial. Uh, we don't actually need any of them because we have a satellite ring around Minmus that it can, can that they, they can they can reach the uh, the probe core without the need for the uh, the aerials. But, you know, again, just in case anything happened to the satellite ring or something like that, we have these as an emergency, uh, as an emergency communications solution. Here we have the ore, as I mentioned in the SSTO episode, where I'm kind of using the ore tanks to represent supply crates uh, for the actual hotels. We can have things like food, uh, shampoo, little chocolates to go on your pillow. All that good stuff will get stored in the ore tanks. And... Uh, that's pretty much it. So, a little bit of a tilt there. We do have those fuel tanks as well, which could there they could just serve as a fuel resupply mission in case we needed to resupply the base with fuel, I guess. I mean, there will be escape pods and an escape rocket at the base to ensure safety for the Kerbals in the event of, I don't know, a carbon monoxide leak or something that would result in a hotel needing to be evacuated. Uh, in case one of those rockets leaks or something like that, we can resupply it with liquid fuel. I also thought it might be a good way to serve as a ballast in case Nimbus's low gravity meant this thing was very hard to control and it kept tipping, but I did try, I filled it with hyper edit just to see if it made a difference and it didn't, so it doesn't really serve as a good ballast. And here's like a weird, aud um, not audio glitch, visual glitch here. The longer I sort of went without quick saving and quick loading, uh, at least on the surface of any planet or moon, like parts have this weird sort of flickery effect. So I'm not sure, so I had to keep on stopping, pressing F5, then pressing F9 to reload the quick save I just made, and that reset the graphical glitches, and then, you know, a few minutes later, it would start to get so bad again that, for the sake of people with photosensitive epilepsy, I'd have to um, quick make, make another quick save and reload it again. So, not quite sure what was causing that, because I reloaded things like Scatter and Planet Shine, and none of those seemed to make any difference. So, not quite sure if it's to do with a visual mod, or if it's part of the game itself. Um, I'll probably play around with it at some point, but... For now, I'm not quite sure what was causing it. But we can see the flag there in the distance, six kilometers away, just over. So we're going to just crank this thing up to maximum speed. The max speed it can realistically do is about 50 meters per second, but you wouldn't really want to take it that high because it takes a long time for it to stop. Yeah, here's the graphical glitch is getting really, really bad. So I attempted to reset scatter and things, but nothing really seemed to make a difference. So um, we'll just kind of, I guess we can just crossfade to a point where I reloaded again so the graphical glitches stopped, and here we are. So gradually slowing down. I did end up overshooting it a little bit. You can see the brakes aren't particularly effective. This may be again due to the fact that our contact with the surface isn't great because of the very low gravity, but you know, we stopped. So I backed up a little bit to get close to the flag and got a little bit too close and <laughs> I ran it over. So. Uh, yeah, whoops, <laughs> uh, and well, there's no Kerbals to reset it either because this thing is an aut autonomous bus, because I'm not really sure how long it's going to take to rebuild the, uh, well, not to rebuild, to build the hotel, so didn't want to send a Kerbal up just yet, and besides, it, it would be better if it was a robot, it's a cooler, it's a, nice, it's a cool little selling point that you go on a robotic bus to the hotel itself. I like how that would be the selling point, not the fact that you've gone on a spacecraft <laughs> that takes you to a 
to an alien world. But there's the uh, there's the flag uh, fluttering nicely. <laughs> the physics does seem to uh, not really know what to do with flags if they become uprooted, but whatever, there's the bus. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your week, and um, there's some links on screen now. Have a good day day. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, there's, I should probably plug the old Twitter and Discord again. They're, they're on screen, as well as Patreon and a link to subscribe. So thank you for watching. What a great outro. <laughs>